Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jacqueline Bullis and I will be the host for this TLC session. I want to thank you for joining us um, for the Professional Development Workshop Master in Portfolio ePortfolio. Please welcome our presenters, Dustin Shulkin, Persephone Hexworth, and Hanson Hunt. Thank you, Jacqueline. So we're going to get into today. Let me uh, move this forward. Um, if we, if everybody wanted to first log into Portfolium, we have a couple instructions here on how you can do so. You go to portfolium.com backslash login. You'll go to this page, and for anybody who uh, needs to to join, you can click the Join Now button. So I'll leave this up for a, a moment here. Um, Hanson, if you wanted to add anything, or Percy. Let me do so, but uh, pretty self oh, Yeah, we have the second half of this workshop. Uh, we will be diving into using your portfolio for those that can stay past the 30 minutes in the second half. Um, so we just want to make sure everyone's logged in now so that way when we get to that point, we are ready to go. And if you don't have an account, this gives you 30 minutes to uh, create your first account. Perfect. So um, I will move this slide forward here and just a uh, brief overview of the workshop agenda today. So um, we're going to talk, uh, we're going to, we're going to start at this, this 1040 mark here um, around the 10 most important elements of building your e-portfolio. So I will be talking through some of those elements. And then um, at 11, for those of you who can stick around for the additional time, um, Percy will be walking through setting up your e-portfolio and uh, that's why we had that first slide up there on on pulling up portfolio and creating your your account. So this is today's agenda. I will hop into my piece here around 10 most important elements of building your e-portfolio. So if we look at pro tip number one, the one thing I really like to tell our, our partners and those who are interested in building their portfolio and profile, we like to focus around intentionality. So what I really mean by that is, is thinking about why when you're sharing your content, why is it important to share this? And why is it important to showcase these specific skills and consider who the audience would be for the content? And I don't, I don't mean that to, to say you pander to a specific audience, um, but when you are uploading, think about who the audience would be. I think uh, we'll get into another pro tip around here later on around being well-rounded. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not saying just focus on a specific specific audience and only make um, you know content uploads based on that, but think about who would be viewing your content, who's important, and and understand why the piece of content that you're you're uploading and you're sharing in your your profile and your portfolio is something that somebody would want to see, and why is it that it's impressive or appealing or interesting? So. Always keep the, the intentionality in mind. As we move on to pro tip two, secondly is, is being concise. So help your viewer come to a, a quick conclusion about what you are trying to showcase. So there's a lot that you can share. We know that each individual has many things that they're proud of and we all really should be. Um, whether that's in our careers, whether it's at school, whether it's outside of the classroom, uh, volunteer work we're doing, right? We, we have a lot of things to be proud of and it's important to consider how that can look overwhelming to a viewer. So think about when you are uploading um, an artifact that you aren't bloating it with too much content because again, that can come off as overwhelming. So make it easy for your viewer to come to a quick conclusion about what you're trying to, trying to express. <clears throat> We move on to pro tip three. We want to focus on curation and organization. So it's important to focus on the most valuable, in, valuable or impactful projects that help stereo, tell your story. Um, you know, there's a lot of mm, social media sharing platforms out there, and just understand that there's a, a time and place for particular types of photos. So we have Hanson here sharing a selfie. Uh, with a group of friends at a at a restaurant, it looks like, or uh, maybe a bar. This <laughs> and is this, this is a post run burritos is what we're eating. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so obviously a really good Instagram post, a Facebook post, something like that. Um, more appropriate there. So just consider 
what it is that you're putting on your, your profile and be sure to curate and organize it appropriately. So we, we want to see the, the things that are most valuable and impactful as a viewer. If you're sharing it specifically with um, a potential employer, these are things that you, you want to look impressive. And that's not to say uh, Hanson and his friends here don't look impressive, just housing those burritos. But um, this it's definitely something you wouldn't exactly want on your, your e-portfolio that you're sharing with um, esteemed colleagues or uh, potential employers. Unless your potential employer is a restaurant serving burritos. Yeah, that, that's right. Or maybe Hanson. Hanson's your potential employer. He might be interested. Let's move on to pro tip number four. Um, I mentioned a little bit around showing your, your well-roundedness as either a candidate or really just as a person, right? So um, including information and, and projects that show off um, your work with volunteer groups, maybe it's a sports team that you're a part of and, and a captain of, you know, experiences beyond just projects we're doing at work or at school. Um, because we are more than just these projects and part of sharing that, that whole story um, is sharing everything beyond just the classroom. We're, we're much more than that. And think about how your projects are making an impact. And it doesn't have to be this massive impact, um, but just think about how your projects, for example, you're doing something specific at work or you're working as a, a student intern somewhere and, and you're focused on a social media project, for example, but explain how the impact of your work is actually generating ROI or, or something of that nature. Just think about how the projects that you're doing, you're sharing are actually impacting um, outcomes if, if we want to, to use a, a more business, a business-like term. <clears throat> we move on to pro tip five. We know that this is a digital e-portfolio and e-portfolios tend to be much more visually appealing. So it's important to have this, this visually appealing artifacts. Um, so add imagery to your pop projects to make it stand out. Um, even if it's just a Word doc, be sure to associate some graphics or um, something that helps improve how it looks on the e-portfolio. And like I said, while I think papers and, and written work is incredibly important, it does show off a particular skill set, um, it is important to try and grab the attention of your viewer. And uh, quite frankly, it's, it's not always appealing to see just a bunch of words on uh, a piece of paper. So um, accompanying papers or uh, written documents with Graphics um, always an easy way to stand out and, and a way to capture the attention of your audience. Moving on to pro tip number six, definitely want you to connect with students. So uh, uh, Portfolium is a form of a social media platform and one of the biggest uh, kind of gains of the platform is the ability to connect with others, both for Kind of sharing and, and connecting with students, sharing work, and um, just kind of promoting yourself amongst your peers. Um, but secondly, others are using it as inspiration. Um, they're looking at other people's, uh, other students' work that they're connected with, and it's inspiring them to do similar type of work or share the work that they're doing to uh, kind of in a competitive format. I would, I would say, um, share work that's similar to what other students are sharing. Yeah, and Dustin, I want to give us a quick anecdotal story. I know the one of the screenshots you showed earlier was that of the student Elisa Lawler from Henderson State University. And she's joined a webinar with us in the past and talked about how she found a lot of inspiration and really uh, cool other students across the country that she can connect with that are involved in Special Olympics, which is something she cares about in uh, in a volunteer experience that she has, not something she's doing in the classroom. So she didn't really have someone from her school that she can connect with running Special Olympics, or um, she's not necessarily in a, an organization that has a network on Portfolio, but she can just search for the tag or the skill um, in Portfolio on Special Olympics and find a bunch of students doing similar projects all across the country and get ideas on how to 
run her events and run her organization. So really cool, cool stories like that where students are just finding each other naturally based on the tagging system. Yeah, awesome, awesome work there. Um, moving on to pro tip number seven. This one's really one of my favorite functionalities of the, the um, portfolio e-portfolio here. Uh, and one that I often share is creating a, a dynamic resume or cover letter with uh, the save as PDF functionality here. So we have two screenshots, one to show you where that sits and where that lives on the profile itself. And then two, just what the summary or, or outcome of the full profile or the summary looks like. And the reason I like to point this out is when we think about how employers are asking for cover letters and you're trying to write how your experience or your skill set matches with the experience and um, skill requirements of a particular job. Um, that mapping is done specifically via written work. And I think this provides a really awesome opportunity to create a dynamic cover letter, cover letter that links your actual work samples to the skill sets that the employer may be looking for. So um, while it's a portfolio specific feature, I think conceptually, this is something that e-portfolios e in general can, can take a look at and think how they fit into that specific aspect of the job hunting experience. We move on to pro tip number eight. Uh, one of the, the very important things to do is update your profile regularly. So we have an example of Dirk Matthews at Columbia College Chicago, um, who consistently updates his work. And um, we, <clears throat> we think about how to continuously document the work that we're doing. And oftentimes um, we can get bogged down with just thinking about it and, and not actually doing it. So um, those will be some other pro tips coming up here. So a little foreshadowing, but um, you can often think about how you can use your e-portfolio to help map to your vision on your, your future job or, or things that you want to accomplish and how you can continuously build that portfolio or that foundation to say that you do have the skills for that, that upcoming job. So in, in, much like people consistently update their resumes, uh, another opportunity to actually update the work samples that you are sharing and um, keeping that repository fresh and uh, interesting. Moving on to pro tip number nine. So uh, I have an example of my own uh, career moment. So part of updating my profile is considering the cool work that I'm doing uh, that I've, I have done and work that I will be doing for instructor moving forward and continuously updating my profile with what we call career moments or, or work case studies. So actually taking a work sample, putting it into um, my pro, my e-portfolio and tagging it with the specific skills. So I am kind of making myself more marketable if needed in the future um, and continuously updating it. So oftentimes, as I mentioned, we won't, we would love to share these career moments, right? And we often do, we look to a significant, significant other, a uh, family member, a friend, and just share the cool things that we're doing at work. Um, and that's a perfect opportunity and a perfect time to actually put it somewhere else too. Share it on um, portfolio that can be discovered by other people. And, and so when we're thinking about, uh, you know, I, I really like to be able to share this more broadly, uh, portfolio is now perfect for you to, to do that sort of work. And one, uh, someone's asking in the chat too about yep. what are some good examples. Um, but yeah, and Terry, making sure you know your company's social policy. So I can dive into a little bit about my own personal uh, career moments. So when I was applying for a job at Portfolium two and a half years ago, I of course created an e-portfolio and added, started adding some projects. Um, like one of which is what you can see on my profile is an inbound marketing uh, case study which is like collecting all of the things I did around this bigger strategy rather than one tactic like a social media post or an email campaign, but the bigger picture of the strategy and all the elements that went into it to showcase my more strategic skill set. 
And then I also added some case studies and examples that are more particular around companies that I worked with, but due to uh, privacy policies and arrangements with my previous employer, um, I had to make those projects private and only can use those um, and share them privately in the application process. I couldn't use them and have them public on my ePortfolio. Um, I will actually share a link to my ePortfolio in the chat for everyone to see if you wanna click in there. Uh, feel free to connect with me as well. Cool. Thank you, Hanson. And then lastly, uh, the, the last pro tip here is really just, just do it, right? Uh, we oftentimes, as I've mentioned previously, bog down and thinking about when a good time is to um, work on your e-portfolio. Uh, and really, the time's now. It's either now or never, and just, just actually embrace it. You have the platform available to you. Um, it exists, so uh, definitely take advantage of it. And I mean, obviously, we're sitting on the this this webinar here now, and is a good opportunity to start building out your profile. So yeah, and we will do that next. But I think the just do it aspect in anything in life, you you all know this is easier said than done. But what Dustin was also talking about the career moments is when those things when you feel like you have something to share with your friends, family that's probably a moment where you should probably be adding something to your, your e-portfolio as well. It's something that's important to you, important to your success um, and telling your whole story, not just in a classroom setting, but in your work experience and your volunteer experience, uh, whatever it is you're working on. So uh, if you wait and you wait a year to add something in there and you're thinking you'll get to it later, it's really hard to go back in time and reflect on what happened and everything that you learned. So we advise you today to just do it and start adding stuff to your portfolio. But we also want you to teach that to your students. Like, hey, when is a good time to add to my portfolio? It's, it's now, <laughs> it's today. Absolutely. And we, right. are, we are a little head on time. So I think it'd be um, great to take some questions for Dustin here on some of these tips as well as the audience, as some people have written in a couple of questions, but um, as we are taking some questions, we want to remind folks to sign up or log into their portfolio account to the next step. Um, so are there any questions for Dustin's portion here before we jump into the actual workshop of creating your e-portfolio and, and working through earning uh, your first micro-credential? Oh, Dustin, Michelle has a question. Maybe Percy, you might know the answer to this too. Is there a limit on how many tags you can assign a post or project? Uh, and um, the amount of tags, that's a good question. Uh, it might be based on a character about count that people won't hit. Um, so I, I think in theory, yes, there is a limit, but not one that people typically hit. Percy, do you have any insight on, on that? No, I don't. Hmm. <clears throat> I think it's a hundred tags on a project. I think that's all you could have after that. Because I know also for attachments, it's also a hundred. It's just, right. you know, I think yeah. anything more than that, <laughs> it might be a bit difficult to go through your project. I think, my uh, computer, <laughs> I think Dustin had a couple pro tips earlier on, like be concise and intentionality that will uh, help steer you in limiting the number of tags you use. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was, thank you, Hanson. I was going to mention that. Um, let's see. Looking at the chat here. It looks like Michelle also asked, do you have data on what kind of things are clicked on slash explored the most from employers? Not on me currently. Um, Hanson, I don't know if you want to hop in here, if you have anything yeah, a, lot of, a lot of what, you know, when these e-portfolios are being used in the uh, interview process or the job application process is less, you know, you have to submit your resume and get through the, the systems that are parsing through the data um, and thousands of resumes. But once you got your foot in the door, that's when employers and hiring managers are looking for more details about your skills, right? You put that you have, I put that I have inbound marketing as a skill on my resume, but once I'm getting that first interview set up or second interview, they want to see the evidence behind that skill. And that's when they click that skill 
which is a tag in my ePortfolio that people can go to to see all five of my projects that have evidence of that skill or competency. So that's what really employers are, are diving into. But then not just that, I don't want to limit it to just skills. A lot of what Dustin was telling you, you know, talking about was telling your whole story of who you are, right? Your employers are not hiring a skill, right? They're hiring a person and they want to know more about you. So they're not just looking at that skill. That's, that's definitely part of it, but they're looking at more of your volunteer experience, work experience, um, all the other projects and things you can add into your portfolio to tell your whole story. I think, uh, let's see, Gordon Scott. Most lever job applications are asking for multiple sites like LinkedIn profile, GitHub, and they include an option to add a portfolio URL. Yeah, that's true, Gordon. And you can add a portfolio URL, but you can also from your portfolio, e portfolio you can link to your GitHub and your LinkedIn directly. Um, I think maybe there's a pro tip 11 there, Dustin, that we, that we need to add into the slide deck for next version is, is getting those um, linking out to your other profiles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're probably right. It's on our part. So, thank you, Gordon, for pro tip 11. <laughs> uh, Terry, I am not sure I understand the question, but maybe. Hmm. Mind rephrasing that for me, Terry? And Dustin, maybe let's go and jump to the slides and uh, per, and go ahead and mute and let Percy jump on. Uh, yep. We can introduce. Uh, uh, can you make a YouTube video to show teamwork? Um, you can tag your teammates. You can make a YouTube video and add it to a project, and then tag your teammates. And sorry to steal your thunder, Dustin or Percy, if you wanted to answer that, but. Um, I think I can share on my side. Mm -hmm. All right, well, <clears throat> when everyone is ready, if we don't have any more questions, unless, did we get to, did we really answer, Terry? I am not 100% sure. They ask you questions to see if you fit in with the team. Mm -hmm. Oh, like in interviews, if they ask you what kind of movie, I think I'm understanding. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like when you're in an interview and they ask you like what type of movie do you like you know or like what would you consider like what movies do you like to see in order to see if you get along with other folks like if the type of movie I'm assuming that's kind of what you're asking I'm not sure exactly how to answer that myself but <laughs> just want to make sure I think that's what's being asked yeah and I think maybe that goes into what you're going to you know help walk them through next um, or soon is the that description section and really talking you know talking about yourself and your interests in that section all right let's go ahead and Percy do you have control over the slides yes give me just a moment I'm gonna start sharing okay so I'm gonna click on present now mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go Cool. All right, let me know if everybody can see this. Oh, that took me back to the beginning. Fun. Uh, no, you're, you were fine. You're just one second. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, if. Uh, so now we'll. Uh, we'll Bring on Percy for everyone. What we're going to do next is actually set up your build your portfolio and then ultimately walk people through a pathway of the steps they need to do to finish a, a good e portfolio and earn a micro credential at the end if uh, you are interested and want to submit your work. Awesome. Well, hi everyone. I'm a Persephone. Most people know me as Percy. Um, and like Hanson said, I'm going to be walking you through building your e portfolio and then getting you that uh, micro-credential at the end. So if you haven't already, um, step one is to make sure that you log into your account on Portfolium or you go ahead and join um, the website. 
I went ahead and added the URLs again to, this, to the chat in the Zoom. Cool. Those who don't have the chat open, please open that up. We'll have a few links we're sharing there. All right, I'll give a couple of minutes for that. I think that would should be good. Yeah, we should be fine. I think these, we asked folks to log in. Cool. Then for your next step, you're gonna to wanna to join the Learning Success Academy. It's a professional development network. Um, the link will be shared in the chat by Hanson. I'll go ahead and click on request to join for that. Oh, I guess I gotta go approve you folks to join this network, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got Michelle and Lindsay. Allison. So do we just search by learning success? Uh, the link is in the Zoom chat. Got a few of you that have requested to join, but we're missing quite a few folks. The link is in the Zoom chat for everyone. If you want to click the request to join button. There we go, we got a few more folks there. I see you, Kate. All right. All right, and then maybe, maybe a slight delay. Um, I'll just keep uh, approving folks as I see them come in, but Percy, we can, if, you, if you've already gotten accepted into Learning Success Academy, you can move on to the next step that we'll show. You want me to go ahead and go on to the next one? Risky business, let's do it. <laughs> All right, for step three, what you're gonna to want to do is enroll in the Portfolio Mastery ePortfolio Pathway. There's going to be a link shared in the Zoom meeting chat that you'd be able to click on. Um, if you don't see your task icon on the top show up immediately, please refresh the page. Sometimes, you know, with computer technology is a little fickle. <laughs> it might not pop up immediately for you. But it should bring you to it. If you're having any trouble, this is a chance to you can we can, I think, allow people to unmute if you want to say something out loud. You need help, or the chat tool is a good way to get help as well. I'm gonna go to the pathway directly. And we actually have a Ashford student going through the pathway right now as well. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. If you guys want to hear uh, from an Ashford student on one of the keynotes, Thursday's keynote with our founder, Adam Markowitz, we'll also have uh, a student presenting their ePortfolio experience. All right, we got a couple folks into it, but I think we're still waiting on some folks. Anyone having trouble getting into the pathway or into the network? can unmute and speak or we can have, all right, Becky, let's help you out. Can we? Just FYI, um, at, it logged me out before it let me go. Oh. So I had to re-log back in. Shoot. Well, yeah, sorry about that. Um, hopefully it doesn't kick everyone out, but you may have to saw, you may have to sign back in to get into, to refresh that. <clears throat> Oh, log back in and then refresh. Yeah, let's let's uh, log log back in and make sure you're in that network, and then click that uh, pathway link once you we've got you in the network. Thanks, Michelle and Gordon. And uh, Michelle, you had asked, do we finish the pathway? Uh, that's what we're gonna actually walk through now. So we will walk through the step-by-steps. Looks like we got most people enrolled now. I got uh, 10 enrolled, so. And I will reshare that link. Uh, oops, sorry, I shared it to just Becky. I meant to share with everyone. Here you go, Paul. <laughs> We got you, Becky. We got, we were, Dustin went a little fast, so we actually are okay on time, I think. Um, but we did want to give people enough time to get in and, and really start working through this together with Percy.
Percy, can you see in the back end if Becky is enrolled? I can be just a moment. It's under Rebecca. That might be why you don't see it. Oh, ah, okay. Becky uses my coworkers mm -hmm. often also. <laughs> Dustin is checking right now. Okay. Michelle, thanks for joining us. Um, but if you're enrolled in that pathway, it's uh, pretty self-explanatory to work through it and, and do on your own. Um, in this sec next 30 minutes is really just to walk people through um, and guide them through each step, but it's easy to do, do on your own as well. But thank you for joining. All right, Percy, you want to take it away? Sure, if everybody's ready, let's do this. Awesome. All right. So if everybody is on the, um, if you haven't gotten to it already, click on tasks, then you're going to want to click on the portfolio mastery ePortfolio pathway, which is going to take you to this page. You'll see a little bit about the pathway and then we're going to scroll down or click on get started. And we're going to start with a milestone one of three, and we're going to be starting with basic ePortfolio setup. <clears throat> Once you click on that page, it's going to take you to the, uh, let's see, there's a chat. All right, so once you click on um, that first uh, milestone, you're gonna click on the requirement. It's gonna take you to basic ePortfolio setup. So what you're gonna do for this first requirement is you're gonna wanna update your portfolio profile. So you're gonna wanna include a picture of yourself, your background image, change your tagline, and then add any other social uh, media connections. And then we're gonna wanna provide screenshots of that final view once you've done this, and then just provide a little reflection of why this would be important for your students. Um, in developing their online professional and academic brand. <clears throat> Excuse me, so I'm actually gonna walk you through this. So if you go ahead and go to your profile, <clears throat> you're gonna see up here, there's your name, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice, <laughs> your tagline and your URL, also your picture. If you wanna edit any of these, you can actually just click on that. It's gonna take you to the area where you can change your background photo, change your picture, your first name, your last name, and your tagline. Go ahead and fill those out. We have a couple of minutes for that. Shouldn't hopefully take too long. <clears throat> we can give give folks a moment here to go ahead and do that portion. And of course, everyone feel free to chime in if you have questions or are getting stuck anywhere. Percy's here to help. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? Does anybody need any assistance? Any, any, thumb, any thumbs ups on, on done with this, this step? <laughs> I don't see any reviews in my queue yet, so. Well, we haven't gotten to the second part of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. No, no one working ahead. <laughs> you start with basic requirements, correct? Because I feel like I'm looking at a different screen than Percy is. What are you seeing on the screen? When so I'm going to back up two steps real quick. So I'm at the portfolio master e portfolio. Mm -hmm. And then earning the path, and the first is basic ePortfolio setup, get started. Is that right? Yes. So to get to your profile, I'm not sure if that might have been a step that I missed. At the top of the page here, you're going to see this me avatar, then click on view profile. Ah, uh, okay. I'm take you to this. My apologies. <laughs> so, well, like I'm looking at my profile and listening, <laughs> but sometimes I'm assuming. <laughs> okay. You're probably not the only one, so thank you for asking. <laughs> so then when you are on there and then you click on, say, this picture, if you want to edit your name, that's going to bring this pop-up up for you to change all of that. And then once you save, just move on to another section. Yep, we'll be moving on to that. Uh, as soon as everybody's got all that in, everybody's good. We move to the second part of uh, this first requirement. 
I'll go ahead and just show that now, just so we're there. I'm gonna add any like, social media connections. <clears throat> All right, for the second part, I'm gonna go ahead and move ahead. Um, you're gonna wanna click on the Me avatar once again, and then you're gonna go ahead and click here on Settings. Once you're on the Settings page, you're gonna see that you're on the Profile Settings tab. You're gonna wanna just scroll down a little bit and then you're gonna see the area where you can put in your Facebook URL, your Twitter URL, Instagram, LinkedIn, your GitHub. And then if you have a personal URL, maybe you have your own website that you put your photography on or anything that you're really proud of, you can go ahead and share it there as well. Once you've put all of those in, you're just gonna wanna click on update. And then once you click on update, I'm gonna just show you what it looks like on my profile. You'll see little buttons for everything that you've added right here on the left-hand side, <laughs> right underneath the people you may know in the resume section. How's everyone doing with that? Can we get a couple of thumbs up that everyone's okay? We got, we got a thumbs up from Kate. Mm -hmm. Awesome, I love this. All right, Gordon's good. Allison, good, cool. <laughs> uh, Gordon has officially requested from IT uh, Dual a second monitor. <laughs> Let this be known. Hmm. All right, and then to finish up that requirement, you're just going to want to make sure you took screenshots of those, and then go ahead when you um, have those screenshots, you're going to want to click on Start Requirement. That's going to take you to the assignment or the requirement page, where you can upload the files with all the screenshots that you have. And then in your description, that could be where you place the, your reflection on why this would be important for students and developing their professional uh, portfolio profile. Um, if you are maybe a little fancier and you want to type it out in a little Google Doc or in a Word uh, Doc and then upload that as a file too, you could do that as well. You can also click on View Instructions if you've forgotten what you're supposed to be doing. Hmm. <laughs> Once you've got all that in, if there's any skills that you want to add that you've done for this, maybe like, you know, if this is for helping students, you can put, you know, support is a skill. <laughs> um, and any tags that you might want to put, you would just click on submit requirement and then that's going to put that um, right there in the requirement that you've submitted it. I'll give a couple of seconds for this to make sure people get this through and then maybe if we can get some more uh, thumbs up smiley faces or anything when people are good we can move on to the next one who's the first to submit <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be Gordon with only one monitor we don't know he might be the fastest <laughs> Oh, did you? Oh, it's Kate. Kate's the first one. <laughs> Kate. Way to go, Kate. Percy or Dustin, do you, do you guys prefer uh, grading Kate's uh, project or do you want me to? I think Dustin. Oh, don't grade it yet. I didn't know that was fun. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> I need to add more stuff. <laughs> the cool thing, um, I guess if this doesn't have a due date, um, the cool thing about these, you can actually like edit your requirements or you, if you've submitted it and it's not past the due date, you can unsubmit it 
actually edit it and then resubmit it back. So if you have stuff you want to add to it, Kate, go ahead. <laughs> you, you can. Okay, that's fair. I'll take that. <laughs> why, why don't you go ahead and try to add now if you want to. Uh, but Percy, why don't, maybe this is a good time to answer the question though. So for a micro-credential and we're awarding a badge at the end of this pathway, can Kate then edit it after that or badge is awarded? Um, so the badge will be rewarded and the project will post on her uh, portfolio, but she can't edit the one that she submitted for the pathway. So oh, it would just that, post like the one, goes, the one that's a project in the e-portfolio, she can still manipulate? Yes. Okay. But the one that, so if you submit some, it'll come up as like a project. So you can edit that, but there'll be like a static one that will show when you click on the badge. So on your profile, that makes sense. <laughs> Gordon, how you doing? Becky, Allison? Kimberly, you with us? We are happy to, to wait on this as if we got uh, folks that wanna submit the project. Let's give a give another minute here, Percy has a couple of them. Get that project submitted. Percy, why don't, uh, why don't you submit your project? I mean, I don't have anything on it since I'm just going through with everyone. I don't want to submit a blank one. <laughs> but here, I'll go through and take some screenshots just so I can be a part with everyone. You could also just, I mean, I think you can also just submit a URL, the link to your ePortfolio. Gotcha. You asked for screenshots, hands no. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm a tough grader, so I don't know if I'll let you pass, but. Just submit a small one so everybody can see what it looks like when it's submitted. And there we go. Oh, I pulled my project. <laughs> yeah, it does. It goes to like, I think your most recent project or something, so. Looks like we have a couple. We got Gordon and Allison and Percy all in now. Yay! Um, so I don't know if Kim, Kimberly is trying to get in um, at this point, but then Kate, I think, unsubmitted hers. <laughs> I'll go into uh, Allison here so you guys can see how that works when you get the scored. So Allison, you should have just received a notification. And same with you, Gordon. Oh, you're doing great, Gordon. Don't worry about it. Easy test here. Uh, so, <laughs> Percy, I will actually score yours too, so then you can show them the notification I'm talking about maybe. Gotcha. Let me know when you have done that. Good to go. Should pop up at the top. Yep. So you're going to see on this little notifications bell here, this little red circle. When you click on that, you're going to see that um, you have the notification. You have a pathway requirement that's been scored. If I go ahead and click on that, you're going to see it's been scored and a pass. You're lucky I passed you. Thanks, Hanson. <laughs> Good job, everyone. All right, next up. We're gonna move on to the next one. It's gonna be your personal introduction. So with this, you're gonna to wanna to write your introduction within your profile. Then you're gonna to wanna to give us a screenshot and describe the importance of this section of portfolio. All right, so I'm gonna show you when you're on your profile, if you need another refresher for that, remember to click on me, then click on view profile. You're gonna see here at the top of the page, you're gonna have your introduction section. You're gonna see a little pencil. If you click on that pencil, it's gonna bring up this little pop-up so you can edit it if you don't see that pencil. 
you can also click on the three dots here and then can you back up one more time where is that where is that located no problem yeah when you're on your profile you're going to want to just scroll down just a little bit and it should be right on oh your okay got it thank you no problem and so if you click on that pencil like stated, it's gonna bring up the um, option for you to edit it. If you also click on these three dots right here, and then you click on edit, you'll also see the option to edit your introduction. So you can go ahead and edit that, save your changes, and then you can go ahead and- Let's, let's pause while we let people write a little introduction and talk about what to put in there. Um, many of you probably have LinkedIn uh, short descriptions in the beginning of your LinkedIn profile. That's one place to quickly grab something. If you've written a bio about yourself somewhere before, you can grab that. Um, just a short, sweet introduction about yourself. This doesn't have to be fully fleshed out today. You can uh, always go back and add, add more and edit this and keep, keep on updating as Dustin recommended. All right, Percy, I think you can jump back into the submission. No problem. Yep, so once you've done that, um, like the uh, requirement asks, go ahead and just take a screenshot and then describe the importance of this section. Then you're gonna wanna just click on start requirement again, go through the same process of uploading those uh, screenshots and giving us a little reflection and then submit your requirement. How do I get back to this pathway in the requirement? Um, if you want, you could click on finish later, which is just going to take you back to that page. So um, how do we get back to this page? Oh, click on tasks at the top of the page. Once you click on tasks, you'll see pathways. Click on pathway. There you go. Perfect. Personal introduction. There it is. Edit my... All right, let's see what Kate's personal introduction is. <laughs> oh, I know she copied and pasted that somewhere from somewhere. She didn't just write that. <laughs> it's a great intro, Kate. I will give you a passing score. How's everyone else doing? Allison, Gordon, you with us? So I'm kind of just um, following along, but I'm, I'm a little bit ahead and I did have a question. Um, when you get to the point where you're uploading your resume, it tells you to try to upload it to your portfolio instead of uploading it as a project. But for the purpose of becoming an ePortfolio ambassador and submitting it, you are just supposed to upload it um, as a project, correct? Uh, let's, I don't want to jump the gun while folks okay. are trying to write the description. So we'll let Percy dive into that as we go into that section. Is that all right? Sorry, Jamie. Yeah, that, that's fine. I just, I, I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure I'm doing it right, but it's prompting me to do something else. Uh, but to quickly answer, no, don't add it as a project. Just upload your, use the upload function. Okay. Okay. Thank you for asking. All right, Allison has her description in. Personal intro, cool. Gordon, where are you at? <laughs> no problem, Gordon. We are running a little late on time though, so uh, Percy's gonna jump, jump forward now. All right, I'm gonna go on ahead to the next um, requirement, or, which is the upload your resume. <clears throat> Just as a reminder, click on tasks, then click on the pathway, then click on this requirement. For this one, you're gonna wanna upload your resume. You'll see on your profile that there is a resume section on the left-hand side of the page, which is right here. Let's, let's uh, not go over that too fast. Did everyone see where Percy navigated to? So when you're on your profile, I'm just going to bring you up here. Go ahead and scroll down. And on the left-hand side of the page, you'll see the resume section. Yours might be a little bit bigger than mine. 
because I have my resume uploaded already. But that's where it would be at. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Um, you'll notice it pulls in key sections or phrases to your account to help you in filling out your pro the rest of your profile. Yes, the resume section does have a resume parser. Um, so that's gonna just pull in a little bit of information to help you fill everything out. Once you've done that, take a screenshot to show that your resume has been added and then go ahead and give us a little reflection on why including your resume would be beneficial for both you and your students. So just to show it one more time, when you're on your profile, go ahead and scroll to the resume section of your profile and then just go ahead and click on that and go ahead and upload your resume. How's everyone doing? For the sake of time, we keep those reflections uh, nice and concise. <laughs> oh yeah, Kate, good call. We probably should have warned people, bring your resume to this <laughs> workshop because I don't know if everyone has it in hand all the time, but. Uh, Gordon, uh, if you have a couple resumes, just pick one for now. You can always change it uh, right afterwards. But we definitely want you to, to upload the resume. Um, so so you're, you know, the goal is to be able to teach your students where and why to add that resume. <laughs> Where does it go after you upload it? I'm trying to take a screenshot. Should it show somewhere? Um, on your profile, it's actually just going to be this right here. Um, so okay. You upload will look like this. So if you click on this down arrow, you'll actually be able to download it and then I should show. Gotcha. We're running a little low on time, gang. So, Percy, why don't we just uh, try to fire through some of this? And um, I'm available on chat. If anyone has, has trouble, we can follow up afterwards as well. Cool. well I'm going to go ahead and go to the uh, next requirement. That's all good. <clears throat> You'll see we're on milestone two, two of three. Once again, task, click on pathway, scroll down to milestone two of three. Um, for this one, you're going to do teaching to create a project. What you're going to want to do is see within a project, there are several different fields you must complete. Uh, the more robust the project, the higher your project strength. Uh, please either create like a little document or video that just describes each section of a project and provide best practices for completing that section. And then think about how you would train students to make the best projects possible. So I'm just going to go through that really fast. So if you're on your page here, you'll see this new project button on the top. Go ahead and click on that. It's going to look kind of like this requirement page, and basically the same. Um, so you would add like your project title, so test project. If you want to upload any files, if you want to paste a link to something, you also have more options. So if you click on this, you'll see like Instagram, Facebook, Evernote, anything else you want to connect to pull in some documents. Your category is the category that your project falls in. So since this is professional development, you can click on professional development. You, you can also put in a description of what your project is. Also, you'll see on the side here, it gives you a little bit more information about these sections. So if you do need a little help on what to put, or if you, you know, want to know more about it, you can see this little side part here. If you want to insert any links into your description, you would click on this. We'll help you with that. 
You can add any skills, tools, or software that you use. So, you know, if you maybe used uh, JIRA, if you used Big Data, anything, you would put that here. If you have any teammates that you worked on a project with, you would be able to enter that here. You would just type in their name and then you would click on adding them. And then any tags that you want to add to your project. So in the instance of me, I'm an ethnic studies major. So a lot of my projects, I put ethnic studies as a tag. And then once you've done that, you can just go ahead and click on publish. If you wanted to share it to any of your social media that you have, you can click on these. It will give you that option too. And then you go ahead and click on publish project. And then you can have your finished project up here. Once you've done that, go ahead and go back to the requirement. Same thing, I'm gonna click on start requirement, put in the information for it and then submit it. You want me to give it a couple seconds, Hanson? You want me to just keep going through the requirements? Um, I think, uh... You can, you can jump through maybe the next one. Gotcha. Keep going. All right. So the next requirement, we have out of project. <clears throat> now it's time to practice what you preach. So go ahead and create that really awesome project of something that you're really proud of. Um, so you're gonna wanna click on the project new project button again and go through that process. Then take either screenshots or maybe a little video and then provide a reflection on that project, what you did and what you learned through the project, just a little bit more on it. Once you've done that, same as same as past, you're going to click on start requirement, submit everything, put everything in, and then click on submit. Yeah, and I think the main, the biggest, most two, uh, two most important parts of this pathway are this piece of adding something, a, a strong project you really want to highlight on your portfolio. So feel free to take more time afterwards. And then the last step is the ambassador uh, requirement. And that is a reflection about what you learned and how, you know, what you see as the value of ePortfolios for your students. So telling, showing us that you know how to communicate the value of ePortfolio to your students. And once you've completed those, that's when you can earn that Portfolio Pro badge and ePortfolio Ambassador micro-credential as well. If you already if you already have an existing project, so a lot of you didn't didn't sign up just today, so you already had an ePortfolio. Um, this step, you can use an existing project, right? Percy, do you want to show them how to do that? When you're on the Add a Project page, you'll see Start with an Existing Project. You're going to want to click on this, and you can go ahead and look through your projects for what you have. Click on it. Use your description, your skills that you have. Select Project. There you go. Now all you have to do is just make sure that you submit the requirement, and then you've submitted it. You want me to keep on going? I think we're coming up. Yeah, I think we're wrapped up on time, but maybe you could walk people through just briefly um, the rest of the steps. Gotcha. All right, I'm just gonna click on um, them. So for profile section employment, this one's just making sure that you add um, link to a series of projects to your employment section. So if you've added on your profile, just to show really fast, on your profile, you'll see your employment, that's your work experience section, just adding projects to it, showing some projects that you've done that relate to that job you have. Then reflect on the value of being able to link work to your times in your career or education. We go to calls to action. The calls to actions requirement wants, um, within the profile section, you'll see calls to action to aid students. So if you look here on the top of the page, these are your calls to actions that you can click on. Um, this helps to decrease the need for training the ability for students to continue to improve on their profiles independently. Go ahead and just describe those calls to actions, what you find the most valuable, 
and then provide screenshots of two of those that you filled out yourself. And if you were to add another call to action, maybe something that you want to prompt students to add to your profile, what would you tell them that? <clears throat> After that, you're going to have a support, supporting career readiness. So, so actually, this person, this, this is a, they can do one or two of these uh, last requirements. So let's go to the other one. You don't need to do both of these. Just the ePortfolio Ambassador one is the one we want them to, to go with. So for this one, portfolio was built on the idea of providing students with a platform where they could link skills to tangible work samples. This enables them to stand out and show how they are different from others. Please reflect on how you see this making an impact on your campus. Why do you feel portfolio was important for your students um, to have access to? Maybe using a video or through a document, provide an overview of how you will explain this value not only to your colleagues, but to your students. As a portfolio champion, we want to ensure you are truly able to express the value portfolio brings to your students. So please go into, mo into as much detail as possible and sell it to us. And once that happens and we get through on the back end, just making sure we assess each, piece, each person's submission, that micro-credential will be, will be awarded into your ePortfolio. And Percy, maybe um, you could jump into my ePortfolio badge, just so you can kind of show them what it, what it would look like, the ambassador badge. Uh, I'll link to it. I'll link to it in the chat for everyone. This is just an example of what a badge looks like on Portfolio with the evidence tied to it and how it was earned by who it was issued. Um, so I, I link to that in the chat for everyone. If they want to click that, we'll share that in the follow-up as well. Um, but that is ultimately once you're done, what it'll look like. The ePortfolio, the Portfolio Pro badge will have a lot more to it because there's a lot, you know, nine requirements and a lot more work went into it. But uh, so it'll be a little more, more robust of a badge. Hanson, is there a time frame on um, when we should shoot for to have our uh, this first stage of it completed? As Dustin uh, recommended in his pro tip number, I think ten was uh, now or never, or just do it. <laughs> uh, but uh, just I mean, is it's on your own time, right? These are. Um, it's similar to a lot of competency-based education type programs, right? This is not time-based. Um, so you won't get the badge until you're done. And, and that, uh, so the sooner the better, but it's not required that you finish it today. But I, am, I will award that credential to you if you finish it in six months still, you're not disqualified. Thank you. Awesome, because what we're uh, hoping is through the recording that we might have additional folks um, that couldn't attend at this time of day uh, that might want to participate. So um, yes. I appreciate it. We can start uh, working on this anytime and finish anytime. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for asking. All right. Um, if we're going to wrap up here, I just wanted to thank you. Um, thank you. Persephone and Hanson and Dustin for this presentation and for all of you attending. Um, I really hope you all enjoy the rest of TLC. Thank you so much everyone for joining. Thank you. Have a great day.